Hello everybody, welcome back to Ochi Wolf Collection. I'm Ochi, I'm your merch mama. Today, my wonderful husband is back on the channel to assist and to show you guys how to do the ribbon assembly part of this figure because I didn't show that in my original unboxing of this figure. Kurt did that off camera. Today, I want to have Kurt show you guys how he did it, step by step with his own commentary. Hey everybody, Kurt here, Ribbon Master. All right, Kurt, can you show my subscribers how you assembled this figure with this very, very terrifying ribbon? Yes, I can. So when you guys watched the original unboxing of this figure that I did, there is two ways that Sume Art says that you can assemble this figure. One way is to go ahead and pop Sailor Moon on the base and then spiral the ribbon down through her. Or you can put the ribbon on the base first and then guide Sailor Moon through it that way. Um, we both worked with both ways. Right. I failed at both, but you found it easier to put, what, Sailor Moon in first? Yes. All right, show us how you did it. This is why I married him. Very delicately, of course. I'm like mesmerized. I'm gonna and get out of frame just a little bit. Take the bit. last piece of packing styrofoam out of a ribbon. Oh yeah. And then move this off to the side. And now we'll take the ribbon. And we guide it through the the hair loop. The hair loop over here on and... the what would be if you're looking at it the way I'm looking at it, the right side. <laughs> and then you take it below the left ribbon. And it spirals around the front part of her legs. Yes. Yes. So I hope this helps somebody out there because this was like awful to learn on our own you know yes. watching one video one short video on how to do this and then you wrapped it around it comes all the way in the back behind the cosmic heart compact you almost need two people because this is so tight you don't want this ribbon to scratch the back of the cosmic heart compact so that's there why we go. Yeah, this, this, i this helped is a guide it better now okay. yes once we get there's a certain point where it doesn't seem like it's right but then right so I honestly believe if you guys can so have somebody you, help you get, get some help. There's a little flex in this ribbon. You almost yeah. have to use it. So there is the spot here that you want to connect this part first in the base. It'll just slide in like that and that'll give it the angle you want everything else to be at. So from here, yep. and again, we have a spinning base. So this helps you want to attach it. There's a hole here and there's a, a pin on the ribbon. Push that in. This is so less stressful than the first time uh, I did this and you did this. Oh. Okay, and there, there is, it's hard to see. I know because of the light and the color, there's a pin here or a hole here and then the pin and the ribbon here. So you just gotta be kind of careful, but a little bit of pressure. Don't want to use too much. Okay, that one clicked in, so I That one it. clicked, oh my gosh. Okay, and then. <laughs> The last part is the One hair. last final. There's a little hole right here on the hair. Little pin right there on the ribbon. And just like that. It's just done. done! Oh my gosh! Gap free, guys. Yeah. Gap free. Gap free. <laughs> So, Thank you, Kurt. You're welcome, and I, I will do a so slow much. spin. Oh yeah, there'll be some B-roll footage for you guys. I, I, I the can final just picture product. the B-roll footage in my head. Yeah, while you I'm can. Spinning this. It's fantastic. There we go. <laughs> and hope that was helpful for anyone else. I yeah, mean, it, it, it can be a little nerve-wracking because you think you're rubbing it on something, and you inevitably will. But just don't sit there and force it. Just let it. If it's gonna touch something. Just keep slowly moving and it'll eventually free itself up. And this is something we learned from setting it up originally. Yes. And we wouldn't have known that um, going in because uh, I was terrified of this figure because it was so pricey and I was just like, I'm not risking anything. But um, yeah, it's a lot less stressful this time and we really hope this helped you guys. So if this part did, please let us know down there in the comments if this helped you with your sume art sailor moon <laughs> high quality statue the best sailor moon figure in existence fight me on that we forgot our spiral heart moon rod you sure did yeah. oh my gosh you gotta put that in I'll put it the in. finishing touch that's another thing that can feel like you're giving too much pressure but it's in there just like that she's the best i love her 
So if you guys watched my original unboxing of this figure, sadly mine came with a defect. She had a gap between her forehead and the bangs. And a lot of you guys said in the comments of that video to reach out to Sume Art and see what they would do. I did that. They were freaking awesome and they sent me a replacement very quickly. This is the gap free Sailor Moon. We were really pleased with their customer service. Like I received a response to my issue within 24 hours of sending it and it just went smooth throughout the rest of the process. Good job Sume Art. Good company. Love them so far. I know you guys are going to want to know what happened to the defective one. I'm going to show you. You're not going to like this. I didn't like this. It was the worst thing I have ever had to do as a collector. Warning. These next clips are fucking awful. Viewer discretion is advised. This is a collector's nightmare. They said that they will send me a replacement Sailor Moon figure if I destroy this one with a hammer. Oh, I'm just, you know, reflecting that all the times that, you know, you've tried to not break a figure when you're setting them up and all of that. And today I'm actually going to intentionally break a very expensive figure. I don't want to do this, but I have to. Those are the rules to get my new figure in without the defective forehead piece. As reluctant as I am to do this, we're gonna do it. I did some Google searching before I started this video and this is not uncommon for limited edition statues to be destroyed like this. Unfortunately, when they come with defects or a broken piece from shipping, uh, places like Sideshow Collectibles, which is a, another very expensive, large, limited edition figure place. They also require their defective ones to be destroyed with a hammer and they require photo proof before they send you out the replacement. Guys, again, I'm so, so sorry. Trigger warning. If you don't want to see expensive collectibles destroyed, just don't watch the rest of this video. I'm going to cry. I'm legit going to cry. <laughs> I am so hesitating. <laughs> I don't even think I broke it. Oh my gosh, they're actually kind of durable. Redo. I guess I gotta go with some more force, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit her in the head. I think. <laughs> did that do it? Oh, the boot did break. This is harder than it looks, everybody, and I really hate that I have to do this. Oh, God, my soul. Oh, her boots. This is... Oh, my God, they're really durable. Oh, I'm going to puke. Okay, I think she's, she's busted. Yep. I can't take any more of this. Okay, break gotta her get, arm. we got to get an arm off. All right. Okay, please no more. My arm can't take it. I don't feel good about this. I know. You alright? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Do you think that's busted enough for them? Are they gonna be uh, like, oh, that looks repairable? I don't, I don't want them to think that. I mean, the paint's pretty scratched up on the arms. Her head's probably turned oh, way more than it needs to be. Oh, oh both my. the hair pieces are gone. Yeah, this, this isn't worth anything is, uh, anymore. Arm is gone. Legs are one and a half. Oh, oh. Hair, hair. I'm pretty sure I. Heard something go flying over here. I'm sweating like a beast. Guys, this was not a pleasant video at all. I apologize. This is what the damage that we have done to it. It is pretty much irreparable, I would say. Like the paint is chipped on almost every part of her body. The figure is a lot more durable though. I've realized from, you know, trying to smash it up. I mean, she fell all the way to the floor, which is a concrete floor and she didn't break. So. I, that says something about the durability of these. You know how I thought that they're like super duper fragile, but I think they do have a little bit of durability to them. Her hairs have broken off, her little pigtails, but these actually stayed intact, but the figure's busted beyond fixable. So I would say Sumai Art will be like, yeah, this is acceptable. It's, it's busted all because of this gap. All because of this gap. 
I just kind of wanted to share this experience with you guys of what happens if you get a defective product that's a limited edition because this was my first experience with that and I had no clue this is what some companies require you to do. And uh, yeah, I never want to do this again. I'm gonna go cry now. I am so sorry that I showed you guys what I had to do, but from that experience, we have learned so much about this figure. Mm -hmm. We learned that she's not as breakable as I originally thought. Right. I'm sure you guys noticed on how terrified I was during the original unboxing of this. This was my first figure of this scale and at this price range. I paid $640 for her, so I wasn't going to risk anything. I wasn't going to risk breaking her or damaging her in any way. So I was freaking terrified. Right. I was terrified of touching her. I read their instructions. I watched the video. I did everything they said exactly how they laid it out. I didn't want to do anything wrong. That's really the honest truth. Right. <laughs> but we've learned a lot of things from uh, destroying her and from handling her in general that uh, we think will help you guys in understanding how to set up this figure and just about this figure in general. Turns out Sailor Moon herself is polyvinyl chloride or PVC, meaning she's plastic. She's less breakable than the resin heart base. And so I really wanted to do this update video for you guys. So you're not as afraid as I was originally going into this figure now that I've learned so much about her. I have the defective one right here. Bless her little heart. Uh, Curtis and I are going to show you guys what we mean when we say she's a lot less breakable than we thought. So I have the defective one here and what you can see by holding it and feel is it's just plastic. You can go around at any point, the skirt, the collar, you can kind of mesh the pieces together with your fingers. You can tell if that was what the base is made out of resin, it would be brittle. Yeah. These have a lot of flexibility to them. The shoulder pieces, they're a little bit of a thicker plastic, probably a different type of plastic. They're molded probably differently. So they're yeah. a little more brittle and they crack, but you can move the arm around. If this was resin, it would probably crack and break. Yeah, the arm is very, um, what would you call it? Like flexible. Yes, it has a, um, a lot of give to it where it needs it. She was almost impossible to destroy. Yeah. There, a lot and, more and, durable than we thought. And if you probably saw in the footage, it took a, a few hits with a hammer to really start breaking. You can tell the main points where it actually broke are uh, points where the joints go together. And it may have just broke the glue loose in most of the yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like if you look here in the arm socket, that just popped right out. I want to point out we are going to uh, recycle these. I just kept them for this video purpose so you guys can realize just how much more um, sturdier she is than we thought. Right. I would say that the bow, you want to be pretty careful with that bow because yeah. it is sticking out like that. And honestly, I'm going to break this right now Oop. to show you how snappable this is. Yeah. So you definitely want to be mindful of the back bow. But Sailor Moon herself, including her hair, we even have her hair right here. And um, I'm going to demonstrate on one piece how just flexible it is. Like, I was very, very scared when I was doing the ribbon part. Oh, right. That I was going to snap the hair. That was, like, one of my main concerns oh, yeah. when assembling this figure. And I feel like, like, just doing this, oh, yeah, they got, it's uh, got some give to it. They do. I, I do think if they I put big. a little bit more pressure, it would snap, just yes. like the bow. Well, yeah. It, I, I figured it'd either snap and squeezing it together like that or pulling it apart like that. Right. But, like general just rough pressure you yeah. can tell where these did break off of the head where the real weak point actually is it's in the odongo did you guys catch he knows odongo yeah he's he's not a moony but he's married to one so he knows <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing i've ever had to do as a collector i never want to do this again intentionally breaking something that you spent so much money on is is heartbreaking it's no good oh my god you guys are also going to notice I did not use any gloves. Kurt didn't use any gloves when we were handling Super Sailor Moon or her ribbon or the Spiral Heart Moon Rod. And the reason behind that is I feel like that they were completely unnecessary. And I'll explain what I mean. So, like I said, when I first got this figure, I was absolutely terrified on handling her and the instructions said to use latex gloves. So, of course, I followed the instructions 
to use the latex gloves. Working with the figure and finding out how <laughs> durable she actually is, I find it better just to hold her and be able to feel what I'm doing. Because with the gloves, you've got that little latex layer where you can't really feel what you're doing as good as if it was just your hands. And if you're wearing latex gloves that have any bit of looseness to them, you lose your dexterity because that material will shift and you feel like you're holding something better yes. than you are and it, it can cause problems. Yes, exactly. So um, that's where uh, I feel like we deviated from the instructions this time because I don't feel like the gloves are an absolute must. Right. I mean, if you guys out there feel safer using the gloves, by all means, just for us personally, you know, I feel like uh, we were fine not using the gloves this time. Right. Yeah, just make sure you wash your hands. Keep them clean. clean hands so right. there's no oil on them. Like, or anything as, as that can much transfer as you can the figure. Keep off of them. Right, of course. Yeah, make sure your hands are clean, of course, before you touch the figure. We do still recommend using gloves when you are handling the flower resin base because that's the like real scratchable stuff. Right. And I think gloves will help when it comes to that really breakable resin. Yes. So for the base, definitely still use the gloves, like especially when you know you're taking it out of the uh, styrofoam package that it comes in. But with the figure itself, her hair, the ribbon, her back bow. I feel like your clean hands are enough. Yes. I wanted to do this update for you guys because a lot of you have asked me if I got my replacement on the comment section of the last video. So I wanted to make sure I let you guys know how that worked out for me. It worked out great. Sume Art is the best at customer service for any issues. And also we wanted to tell you what we learned from the figure and destroying the first figure. And hopefully that'll help you a little bit more than our first video did, or my first video. Kurt was in that video, but um, I didn't show that footage because I was having a meltdown and he was stressed trying to figure it out. It was just a whole bad situation. I know a lot of you guys out there were like, show us that footage. And I'm like, no, y'all would unsubscribe <laughs> if you saw the footage of us at our worst. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It wasn't that bad. I just didn't feel like it was necessary. But yeah, I wanted you guys to not feel as scared as I portrayed it in the first video. So hopefully this update helps you guys with your Sume art figure. Please let us know down there in the comments. Thank you guys so much for... What am I doing? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video today. I love my Mooney peeps so much. I can't believe it, but this channel hit 10,000 subs, guys. 10,000 subs. I cannot believe my channel's growth over the last couple of months. Um, a huge welcome to the channel if you guys are one of the new subscribers. And of course, I cannot forget my subscribers from the beginning of when I did this channel. I mean, every one of you has helped get me where I am today. So thank you guys so much. I've got some great content in celebration of this uh, milestone for my channel coming up. We're going to do more videos and also have some giveaways. I've got some amazing stuff to give away, including, I'm going to give you a little spoiler alert, the Sailor Moon Bondi doll. Yes, the one that just came out that's freaking gorgeous. I've got one of those to give away. So Make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you guys don't miss that video. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for me. Comment down below if you would like to share your thoughts. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to see you next time. This won't be Kurt's last time on the channel. He likes to pop in uh, every once in a while. Yeah. He, he good hubby. He good hubby. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks guys so much. Love each and every one of you. Hit me up on my socials if you want more Sailor Moon content from me. Stay awesome folks. 